And the plan for today was to go through the open text answers from the survey and discuss them. So these should be these should be them. I guess I can add the link to the meeting minutes. So do we start one by one? I guess so. Tom, should I drive it or do you want to drive it? I know you did most of the stuff around the survey. Uh, if you're all right driving it, Jakob, that's fine with me. I'll chime in where I've got something to add. Okay, so I guess Thanks. the first question for which we get open text answers was what feature do you miss the most in Streamzy? And the first one is around external authentication and authorization and integration with IAM. So assuming we don't have someone live who raised this, I wonder if Like probably the most important thing to understand would be what more or what would be, what would they want better for the current OAuth support? Yeah, I mean, with these things, it's always not entirely clear if they are aware of the current support you know it's just it's just somebody random on the internet has sort of made that comment so we don't know if they're aware of it and it doesn't work for them or if they're just not aware of the support we've already got for you know sort of OAuth and so on that Marco's been working on for a long time now and I think you know I think we've got a story there Okay, so maybe we can add our reactions as comments. Mm -hmm. I guess I should have done a bit more preparation how this work. <laughs> uh, so. So if they are aware of the OAuth support, what exactly are they missing? Or what exactly would they change or add? Like this, does it make sense? Yeah, and I guess we should double check that um, it's sufficiently obvious. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is in the docs we you know we talk at length about authentication and authorization but just make sure that it is signposted um, well enough there uh, but it's true here they mentioned authorization as well and um, i think that's not trivial to integrate with both like you need like most likely a, a custom uh, principal builder and a I'm not sure how easy it is. Well, first, I don't think this is very well documented anywhere how to do so, this with Kafka, to have your custom principal builder and how to use it uh, uh, for authorization and such. Uh, but then, how to do all that in Streamzy, 
because that's nowhere to be found probably. So what we have is the key cloak authorization, which is key cloak specific, but it is a proper authorization done through the key cloak authorization services. And that's definitely documented. Now, unfortunately, Marco is not here today, but from the discussions with him, as far as I understood it, there's not much sense to try to build something more for authorization on OAuth, which would be really general. The OAuth can give you some claims, but it's not really standardized and it doesn't make much sense how to how to use it for the authorization. Yeah, I think building something generic, it, I'm, I'm not sure this makes sense, but I think the whole process, like how would you go around building it yourself? Uh, I'm not sure that's, uh, that's something that's well known uh, uh, to Kafka community. It's also entirely possible that the user meant something different with this, like yeah, so. LDAP integration, for example, which is something that comes from time to time. And we can do LDAP integration through some of the OAuth servers, which support kind of federation between OAuth and LDAP. But if you have just LDAP, it's not completely straightforward since since you would need to have the OAuth server as well, right? So, so there is some demand for that as well. So, yeah, if uh, I guess if the one who raised this is listening to this, it would be great to understand a bit more about this. Yeah. Or, or related to what you just said here, how do we want to sort of bounce this back to the community? So obviously if somebody is listening to this, they can, but are we, are we planning to sort of write uh, an article, just a summary of our findings or? I think Tom plans to write a blog post about the survey. Yeah, I've got a draft, but it's it doesn't tend to go into in-depth discussion. Uh, on each of the you know sort of the points that people raise because it would be a massive blog post if it was so uh, yeah I, I don't think that's really possible right and i mean what would you write into the blog post oh hey it's not completely clear what is missing there if they know about OAuth. so uh, i mean <laughs> To some extent, the best we can do is to, what we did, advertise this this call and advertise the recording. And uh, yeah, maybe some of the people who raised this will get back to us. Yeah, we can certainly link to the recording from the blog post to, you know, to if people want to sort of hear our take on um, the responses that they made. That kind of closes the loop, or at least, it, you know, in a best effort kind of a way. I don't think we can do better at this point. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. There's a lot of topics to cover. But I guess maybe if there is a topic that comes back a lot, maybe we could address this one specifically. But uh, otherwise, I agree, you can't cover everything in the blog post. Yeah, that's kind of the structure of the blog post, is it sort of picks out sort of what we're you know, mentioned more than once, basically, um, and talks a little bit about those. Okay, thank, thank that you. keeps it a reasonable length. So, okay, the next points are around the schema registry and KSQL integration. Schema registry is one we get quite a lot. And I know it's a difficult one because people always want the confluent one, which we obviously can't support. But I do wonder if we if there's a scope for 
putting examples for schema registry deployments. I don't know how easy that would be. Try and reduce the barrier to deploying some open source schema registry. Yeah, we I mean, what? Sorry, go on, Kate. I was just going to say, um, in a in the past, I've definitely run Strimsy next to, for example, the Apicuria registry. Yeah. So we could do look at a blog post or something like that that kind of says, here's how you might set up the two to talk to each other and the right config and things. Yeah, and that could lead to examples or something if that's possible. Um, just to make it as easy as possible for people to run it. And I, I know people might be looking for tighter integration support, but I don't know how likely we, we want to tie ourselves to a particular schema registry. I mean, there may be things we can do to try and abstract away some of that um, so that other registries could put in, but I don't know how generic a schema registry actually is. A lot of the schema registries do work cross well, I say a lot, um, I'm, the Confluent one doesn't, but some of the other schema registries that I've come across in the Kafka space support multiple different APIs. So you can kind of run different connectors, but there's a lot of different pieces that have to line up. So my gut feeling is that tighter integration doesn't necessarily help because there's so many different ways you could do it in terms of the specific registry, the specific connectors and the specific um, converters that you're using for the API that you're using within that schema registry. But I think at least an example of here's how you would run an end-to-end -end example with Strimsy and a schema registry would probably be beneficial. So the thing is, running a schema registry is more or less standard practice now with Kafka. I'd expect probably most people to, to be at least looking into it, if not doing it. Um, so I, I know um, something I come back a lot, but I think being opinionated, like, you know, uh, even if we pick one thing or demonstrating how do you do it in Strings, this is how we package this thing or to pick Epico. This is what we've done to Epico to be able to run it alongside. And this is how you use it. Um, I think this has a lot of value. Obviously, we can't support all of them. There's probably lots of different things on the but at least you no know, showing an example, and I think this is extremely valuable because everybody most likely will have to do this. So uh, I know we tried not to be opinionated, but uh, I think there's uh, some value in, in building the, uh, the full ecosystem uh, rather than only providing the bricks. I'm not sure it's about opinionated or not. I think majority of people would want confluent schema registry but there the blocker is the licensing, not being or not being opinionated. Then another question, which I think is important to consider is what does it actually bring us to include the registry? Like what will be the value we give in general, both the Apicurio as well as the Confluence Schema Registry, they are fairly simple client applications with fairly simple configuration. So it's not that complicated to run them. And I think they run as a simple deployment as a basically stateless application. So like in the first place, I would question whether they actually need an operator over the deployment itself. And then even if we would assume that the operator adds some value, then if we would, for example, talk about the Apicuria registry that has its own operator. So what's the value of duplicating the efforts? Now, examples of how to deploy them or blog posts, how to deploy them. I think that's something what can be useful for both of them. The question is who has the time to work on it or contribute it and maintain it and test it with every release and so on. I mean, I do agree about um, what level of integration is worthwhile. And I was gonna make the same point about, well, it's just a deployment. And we, 
it's kind of an anti-pattern, isn't it, to sort of lead people into thinking that the any of the Strimzy operators should be used to install, you know, other operators or should be operating arbitrary Kafka applications, which is in effect what a schema registry is. It needs to know about Kafka, but you know, it's that's not what we're in the business of. I think where there might be an angle for some level of integration is on the discovery, right? You've got a you've got your Kafka client application and how do you know what the schema registry for that is in this particular environment and we've got the access operator um, is a mechanism for sort of discovering how to connect to a Kafka cluster so I do wonder if perhaps there's an angle there for using the access operator to expose information about a schema registry maybe but I'm not convinced on that point either. One place that we could provide examples that might also be beneficial is in Connect and um, just providing examples of how you would build your own custom Connect image that has the right converter in for the schema registry you're using, because that's something that I've definitely seen people be confused about is which converter they need for different registries and that sort of thing and where they get them from and stuff. So that's something that we that we could potentially help people with. How does it differ from connectors? It's it's the same in terms of it's the same mechanism, but we could provide in the same way that we have an example that says here's an example of getting the file source connector. You could have an example that gets the right converter for the most popular registries just so people don't have to construct it themselves. Okay. And obviously the, the KSQL thing is a, is, a is a slightly different thing because there is no open source KSQL. So fully open source. So that one's, as you've said, Jacob is a bit of a non-starter. What would KSQL integration be? Well, again, it could just it could follow. You could do the same thing if we if we give an example of the in, integrating with a Confluent registry. Um, you could do. I've got a GitHub repo somewhere of showing how you can run I KSQL think, with it. Didn't you wrote even a blog post about it, Tom? Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a, a repo somewhere with how to run KSQL with um, with Strimzy. So it might just be a case of updating that. Yeah, so again, that feels like an area where more information might be helpful, but I don't necessarily think, I don't know what the like it change you would make to Strimzy would be so that it supports. Yeah, I mean, proper integration with that because that is stateful. It runs a bunch of Kafka Streams apps, you know, but again, because it's Confluent proprietary, yeah, you know, we've, um, doing that tight integration with Strimzy is a bit of a non-starter, but certainly getting it up and running with Strimzy is, is, is doable, and we could update the examples for the latest versions. OK, so I try to summarize these comments. I think in the sake of time, we should move forward. Or does anyone have something else important? Okay, then we seem to have a bunch of issues around user interface. Where I guess our answer is that we don't have the right skill set and the time really. Or yeah, I mean that's certainly what about? I've that's certainly what I've got in the uh, the draft of the the blog post is you know I think the people in the community um, you know who fairly well represented by people on the call but um, I'm not really aware that anyone in the community has really got the necessary front end skills to do a good UI 
Um, so unless and until you know somebody is prepared to volunteer the time to do that, which is obviously not a trivial undertaking, then I think we're in a difficult kind of position. Um, what we could do is try and make it easier for people to, you know, or possibly again, it, it, similar to the sort of schema registry, is if the stuff we can do to make it simpler for people to run, you know, open source UIs, then that's fine. But I'm not aware that there's anything that we particularly need to do there, either. Is there? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't use any UI myself, to be honest. I think in a way, the way we imagine users to use Strimzy might not be always compatible with the UIs, right? Like things around configuring the Kafka clusters or things around managing topics and so on, or users, they are not always the same if you follow the operator pattern and if you follow the UI, which is expecting to connect to pure Kafka, right? So I think that makes it a bit difficult to say, okay, let's choose one of the existing UIs, let's document more, let's provide examples how to use it. But I wonder if there is a UI which would kind of perfectly fit Streamsy and the, and the operator pattern. Because ideally, when we would talk about the Streams UI, then I don't know for the configuration of the Kafka clusters, it would actually need to go through the Cube APIs and not through the Kafka APIs, for example. Uh, similarly, for user management and uh, yeah, the topic operator in theory should work bi directionally, but we know sometimes how it is or isn't. So. So that makes me wonder if I kind of assume that because of these reasons, it's not just a question of adopting some UI which people like in general, but it's actually about having a custom UI which fits strings in. Yeah, I mean, I strongly agree with that point. I mean, it, but there's a big difference between something generic for Kafka and something for strings. Yeah, it's a good point. But it doesn't change the fact that there's no one in the community who could work on it, so. So, so here we've not really put details, but well, the first one has put details, but he seems to be mostly interested in Kafka. Like you want to see the topic lists, you know, and you want to see messages flowing. So, um, so, so I guess the UI already available in the community, uh, uh, like CMAC or uh, sort of provide that already. Yeah, I mean, there's, of course, a lot of the UIs offer things which work just fine with streams, you like browsing topics or seeing some topic statistics and stuff like that. So it's not like, like they don't work at all. Okay, I put this together as the node. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, this is much slower than I thought. I think I was naive as usual. Okay, all the features needed so far, great. Let's hope it stays. Uh, it's still support, my favorite. Uh, so that's actually something I would be quite interested to work on, but I guess the reality is that the things like zookeeper removal and so on are more important. 
And the issue with the Istio support is that to properly integrate with Istio, you actually need to change a lot around how your security works. But Istio is really a niche thing. So there's always a bunch of users asking for tight Istio integration. But there's also awful lot of users who will not install Istio just to run Streamzy. So I think the implementation of this to do it properly is a bit tricky because it means very different code branches for doing different things, which puts a lot of strain on things such as testing and maintenance and keeping the features on par and so on. Yeah, I assume this comes from users in a like regulated industries uh, that have to have some certifications and compliance. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean it's a pretty huge task to do. So, uh, I think before undertaking this, we want to ensure that uh, we have plenty of these type of users. And <laughs> I, to be honest, I don't think. I think it's relatively small percentage in reality of those who actually use Istio. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think you got to, to me, the main uh, reason to adopt something like this would be to be in a regulated industry. And we need some sort, some need to be able to certify. With, uh, with somebody that you got some security in place for data and we use this tool for that. Yeah, but I'm not sure that's who the Istio users are. I would expect that in the most regulated industries, they didn't got that far to really use Istio. That's what, what, that's what we used it in my previous uh, work. Did you? And did you have a lot of users on it? Well, all our clusters were uh, ISO and uh, KIPA and uh, whatnot, and like another 10 certifications. <laughs> so, yeah, because most of our users were like in, uh, in the equity industry. Okay, none right now. Keep up the great work. It's fine. Multi tenancy. Do we want to say something to that? Please to be. Could be hundreds of different things. Yeah, I just wanted to say the same that it can mean multi tenancy on the Kafka level, kind of the fake multi tenancy on the Kubernetes namespaces level, and so on. So it's not really clear what exactly it means. I mean, obviously, this is a conversation we've had hundreds of times with the topic operator, for example, and I dare say um, you could do something similar with the, the user operator. So I would guess, you know, if I had to guess what it meant, then I would think it would mean something along those lines, but we've never um, come up with something which is entirely satisfactory there. So. kind of a hard problem though we did discuss recently the idea of um, a way of sort of uh, partitioning things in the topic operator yeah 
Yeah, we also wanted to do the POC around the kind of namespaced operators with some kind of proxying already a long time ago. Mm -hmm. We never really got time for that. Okay, the next two answers are fairly positive and not much to discuss, I guess. Here, I'm not sure it's really clear what to auto configure. Yeah, I mean, that could be anything, couldn't it? Okay, cruise control UI or KSQL. So KSQL we already discussed above. And Kyle's currently working on a blog post. I think he said about um, uh, cruise control UI and how to set it up with Strimzy. Okay, craft, what to say to that? Working on it. Like it is, is it fair to say it? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Clearly they haven't seen the bridge. Maybe they did, but they don't want to use it. Okay. But uh, at the end, as far as I know, the REST proxy follows the same as the schema registry and so on. If you want to use it, you actually can set it up just as yet another client. So the CRL and OCSP is uh, an interesting Cert one. <laughs> yeah, for those who don't know it, it's the certificate revocation list and OCSP is something, some similar protocol. Online certificate status protocol, I think. Yeah. Um, I must admit, so I think I had a few very vague thoughts about this when I was looking at the um, CA abstraction, but certainly nothing developed enough that I wrote it down at that point, really. Um, so that's kind of a, a new one, but if it's only one person asking for it, um, it's difficult to sort of see that as a, a priority. I think there's 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 more people wanting to do things like using um, certificate operator, you know, in the first place rather than. Um, I was surprised nobody raised that. Yeah, but certainly in the past, that's we've had more people asking for that than wondering about certificate revocation. So when I was reading, when I was looking into this at some point, I uh, one of the things which I found out was a lot of articles and posts saying that it anyway doesn't work properly in Java. 
which seemed a bit weird, but it wasn't a single thing at that time. Yeah, I mean, it's quite, it's potentially quite a deep subject because um, you've got CRLs where you've got sort of a, a potentially very large list of certificates um, that you need to download and typically they revoke certificates don't stay in that list terribly long and then you've got OCSP where you need to call out to uh, basically sort of make an HTTP call I think the way it works with a particular certificate to find out whether or not it's still valid and then you've got OCSP stapling where you basically get um, an attachment along with the certificate that's signed by the CA that says oh, it was good as of you know three hours ago or whatever um, so quite how you'd integrate that in uh, it would require some thought um, never mind you know what is actually available in Java you know sort of natively or in um, sort of related API so I don't know for example if bouncy castle's got some support that we could lean on so it's a big, big topic. So what I remember from my investigation was that there would be some things which we would need to configure in Kafka to let Kafka use it somehow. And then the other part is whether we should support it for our certificates. For the second part, I would say absolutely no, not too much effort. For the first part, I think if someone gives us a clear guide how to configure it in Kafka, for for example, for users using their own CAs to sign the user certificates, then that's something that might not be that complicated or. Yeah, possibly. Because I mean, right now, most of the security options are disabled. So maybe that's just about enabling some stuff or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, certainly exploring um, what might be needed in Kafka um, might be worthwhile because you're right, it might not be that much effort. Mm -hmm. And it would be good in the Kafka ecosystem, even if it wasn't sort of um, directly supported in Strimzy. Okay, poor integration with external brokers such as MSA, MSK. I will be quite curious, what does that mean in more detail? I can imagine two different parts. One, it's about having native stuff such as IAM authentication for Amazon MSK in the things such as Connect or Mirror Maker. which I think makes kind of sense and I have it on my to-do list. But one of the issues there is that we don't have any resources to test these things. So I think unless someone wants to help us with that and uh, provide us some infrastructure for that, it will always be in the style that there is some generic authentication support and you have to add the right jars and uh, and test it yourself the other part possibly might be around connecting the standalone user and topic operators to things like msk using i don't know social plane or the im authentication and 
to be honest, my personal view, that's not our core business and we should do it as it is today. If someone wants that, they should contribute it. Anyone has anything else to this? Okay, then I guess Tom would do this so we can remove it. I would. Okay, customize user operator. Uh, I guess it would be good to know how to customize it or what to customize. Yeah, I agree. It's unclear at the moment. So this one, I guess that Paolo is not on the call. Yeah, that's that's covered by Paolo's proposal. Why is Paolo not on the call? He said he will be here if they don't lose with Liverpool yesterday. <laughs> now I'm quite upset that he's not here. Maybe you know something we don't. Yep, just left. Uh, yeah, just oh, left. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I think his his auto scaling proposals uh, cover that. Okay, great. So that might be solved soon. Now, SAS plane support and disabling SSL for internal application. Anyone has any views on it so that I don't do all the talking? I mean, I'd love to know the use case for SASL plane because it's it's like only it's kind of barely supported in Kafka in that you have to encode the usernames in the config rather than uh, them being sort of stored um, in the metadata as it is with uh, SASL. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not keen on that unless there's an amazingly good use case. Maybe there's some client which doesn't support anything other than plain, but really? That would be my guess. I saw some in the past. Or at least let's put it client, which doesn't necessarily support Scrum SHA. So if... Right. If username and password authentication is what you want to use, I think there are some clients and some tools which which don't support Scrum Shell. Yeah, I think I would be a bit skeptical that happens without the good use case, which I don't really see right now, because the way it's implemented makes it really hard. What about this part? Uh, 
again, it would be nice to know why they wanted that. Is it for performance reasons? In which case, yeah, that's maybe interesting. Or is this person just, you know, desperately not keen on anything that looks like security? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, one of the challenges here is that, well, let's assume it's not hating security, which would mean that you need to build some additional layer, for example, at least for authentication, right? I mean, if nothing else to handle, then authorization would be enabled on the user's listeners. which is kind of the, the more complicated part, what to do there, how to do it and so on, because the MTLS authentication, it's kind of the most straightforward and easiest to implement thing which you have. Yeah, I mean, it would be just be really good to know what the what the need for that was. It um, also ties a bit into all the discussions around things such as Istio or or proxying a bit because obviously it doesn't fit completely into that world where you have some other layer doing the same on top of it. Mm -hmm. True. Okay, a bit more detail about the topic. So I assume this means in the Kafka topic resource. Yeah. And um, there's good reasons not to do that because it's just, you're just ending up doing writes to etcd via a Kube API server for stuff which can be quite volatile. Um, so the risk is, is that you it ends up being yeah a performance problem in Kubernetes because you're just hammering it in certain circumstances. If there's a lot of thrashing of stuff entering and leaving the ISR, for example. Yeah. Yeah, so I I'm, mean go on. I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of reluctant for that reason. It just seems like we could add this feature that, you know, on the face of it looks quite neat, but on in practice, you know, people aren't really able to use. And then, then you don't even have a config option to say whether or not to publish that stuff. And then what have you achieved? Yeah, I feel with the user because I remember that I raised with you the same point in the past but i got exactly the same answer so yeah that's the reason why it's not implemented and might never be implemented i mean a lot of the time you know all the brokers are in the isr for all the partitions so a lot of the time it maybe wouldn't be a problem but Yeah, no, I understand it. I think the issue here is that uh, that's where, for example, the UI is missing a bit, right? Because while the reason why not add it to the Kafka topic status is good, yeah. it's actually quite complicated to get this information, especially if you have authentication and authorization enabled. You then need some kind of... Uh, tool pods or debug pods with the user setup and the tools and so on to actually query these things. So yeah. So it's quite complicated and I guess that's where the ask comes. So I wonder if maybe I know that in the past we have been thinking about the Kafka roller improvements with the agent doing a bit more to expose the broker state. 
I wonder if that can be somehow used to also expose this information about the topics, which can be queried more easily by some tool, for example. Yeah, I mean, potentially that is a route to providing better visibility to that, but unless we've got a clear idea about what those other tools would be, then, you know, providing some um, HTTP API for that without any other tooling is kind of, it's better than nothing, but it's not a lot better than nothing. And I guess it's also a bit risky if you have something running as an agent in the yeah in the pot you probably don't want to get it hammered by some application where someone decides to query it in a tight loop and wait until something happens and so on right mm -hmm. yeah okay so that was the first question only and we have two more to go do we want to call it a day <laughs> and continue next time or? I think that seems like a good idea. At least the agenda for next time sorted out. Uh, please, can everyone think about a better way to track it? I think it's probably my screw up, but I think we can probably do better to track the discussion than do it in the comments for the document. So if someone comes up with some better idea, we can I can prepare for it for next time. One thing I noticed here is that the answers are super short. Like uh, literally, uh, <laughs> there's only one that's two lines. So um, so I don't know if we if there's anything we can do in the next survey to make Kevati if you write something and write more than one word. <laughs> if you want to have a chance for us to decipher it. Yeah, better prompting to say be as specific as possible and you know point to particular components or APIs where possible would have helped um people avoid making you know they're they're trying to contribute some something that they think is meaningful. Um but you know without enough context, some of these things have been very difficult to interpret so yeah we can so all we can do is ask for more sort of context i think yeah maybe ask why uh, or maybe ask for a use case that it would help with for them and that might clarify exactly what they're looking for or what their issue yeah, is yeah that's a good point what feature and you know and and the use case to go with it would provide a lot of that context as well as sort of asking about apis and or components um, I mean, some of these are pretty clear, so I think it worked fine for for a lot of those, right? Which one is clear? Well, <laughs> this one is pretty much clear. UI is pretty much clear. Istio support is pretty much clear. Cruise control UI, craft this, this, uh, this, and this, and this is also pretty much clear. So I think it's not it's not that bad. For well, once, you're more enthusiastic than I am. <laughs> well, I mean, some of these are not like people are asking for UI for a long time, right? They are asking for schema registry support for a long time. So, in a way, it's maybe easier for me to understand the question because there were already tens of Slack discussions on these topics. But I mean, I think the tricky part is not necessarily to get the people write blog posts about their use case for their feature in the survey, right? And the survey doesn't really lead to it. So I don't remember how exactly it looked like, but I expect that there was some list or something where you could have also cho choose something or something like that. So I think the ideal would be that for the people who have some more complicated requirements to actually get them to Slack, for example, or to GitHub discussions to 
talk about it there and that allows you to also ask back some questions. So I, what I'm wondering more about than how to get the people write some long explanation in the survey is how to get the people who go to the survey and write there some of these things to actually get them to one of the other channels and write these things there where they are much easier to, to discuss. Yeah. Well, anyway, so that's it for today. Uh, I will publish the recording and uh, if I get bored, I will try to add chapters to make it easy for the users to find the different points. And I will also mention it on Slack and other channels and next time we can continue with this. Sounds thanks. good. Thanks Thank for you. doing this, Jakob and Tom. We shall see you next time. Thanks, guys. Very interesting. Thanks. Cheers, okay. folks. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye all.